Hello Malmesbury, I'm Paul Smith, your Mayor, and it gives me great pleasure to welcome you to the Town Council's virtual St Aldham's Day programme. We're marking the memory of one of Malmesbury's famous sons, the Saxon monk we now know as St Aldham. You might have followed the Saxon trail around town over the weekend, or joined in with the Morris Dancing Workshop with Malmesbury Morris this morning. You may have visited the Flower Festival at the Abbey and at St Aldham's Church and enjoyed a cake and a drink while you're at it. And if you did any of those things, we hope you enjoyed it. We do know that not everyone is getting out and about as much as they'd like, and live events are still carefully controlled to keep them safe. So in addition to the activities in town, we're live streaming a special history programme again this year. So you can also enjoy St Aldham's Day, even from the comfort of your favourite armchair. Before I say any more about what's in the programme, I'd like to say thank you to some very important people. I'd like to thank Alice Beer for starring in our film. You know, you'll know her as a presenter on ITV's morning show. Thanks also to Tony McAlevey for another fantastic history talk. We couldn't have made the film without the generous support of JS Film Productions and Kevin Mullen, so a huge thanks for your help. We need to thank the residents of Malmesbury who have opened their doors to the film crew and we're very grateful for your generosity. I'd also like to thank George Davis, Robert Peel and Lisa Tweedy for donating their time, film, photographic and technical services. Thanks are also due to the Athelstan Museum, in particular Janet Castledon, everyone at St Aldham's Church and the Abbey for their work with the Flower Festival. And finally, I need to thank the councillors, Kim Power, Campbell Ritchie, Catherine Doody and Fran Vandelli, along with the Town Hall staff led by Claire Mann and Helen King, for all the hard work they've put into making this weekend's events happen. We're lucky to have so much support for the event again this year. So let's get on with the programme. First, I'm going to hand over to Councillor Campbell Ritchie to find out a little bit more about St Aldhelm. Who was he anyway? Campbell will also take you on an Explore Malmesbury Saxon tour of the town. So over to you Campbell. My name's Campbell Ritchie and I'm project leader for Explore Malmesbury. Today is St Oldhelm's Day, but who is Oldhelm and what did he do for Malmesbury? Let us go back to 640 AD. The thing is, Oldhelm made Malmesbury. We know of him as a saint and we still enjoy his feast day each year. And we have heard he did miracles and our greatest historian, William of Malmesbury, writing about him 350 years after he died, was a fan. But it was so long ago and, well, so what? Aldhelm was born into an unstable, shifting world of conflict, ambiguity and uncertainty. His mission and achievement was to deliver stability, clarity and certainty. Aldhelm was a Saxon. But Aldhelm was not just any old Saxon, he was the grandson of the King of the West Saxons. Aldhelm means Old Helmet. He could have been a warrior king, but he chose another destiny. Aldhelm's parents believed in the old gods like Odin and Thor, but they converted to Christianity not long before Aldhelm was born. He was educated here in Malmesbury by Maidolf, the mysterious monk from Ireland who gave Malmesbury its name. He went to Iona, an island off the coast of Scotland, to further his education. And then he went to Canterbury to study with Theodore and Hadrian. It was the best school in the country and Aldhelm was a fantastic student. 
He received instruction in the books of Holy Scripture, the art of meter, astronomy and computation. Aldhelm says figures and calculations were never kindly amenable to him. But he was a swat. He gave his apologies for not attending a Christmas party at the invitation of his bishop because he was studying Roman law. And his study of law at the time made him unique. For some years he was back and forth between Malmesbury and Canterbury. At Malmesbury he had a growing role in the development of the new abbey before he was formally recognised as abbot. He himself said that he was performing the office of abbot without distinction of merits. The Venerable Bede said at this time he was a man most learned in every respect who was both resplendent in his style and also noteworthy in his erudition. Erudition, absolutely. Althelm was not just a scholar, he was a great communicator. As William of Malmesbury said, he was approachable and simple. He could overthrow opponents with a thunderbolt of rhetoric or charm pupils with a honeyed stream of instruction. He would come down to the bridge here by St Oldhelm's Mead and sing. He would gather a crowd and lead them to his church. His riddles are fun. Try this one. I share now with surf one destiny, in rolling cycles when each month repeats. As beauty in my brilliant form retreats, so too the surges fade in cresting sea. Can you guess the answer to the riddle? It's the moon. Althelm wrote a hundred riddles, and here's his book of riddles. It's full of wordplay. And for those of you who like your classics, Althelm wrote the first poem that adopts a tonal meter and a regular scheme of end rhyming. Arguably, it's the first ambitious poem of modern European poetry. Quid dicam de ingentibus altitroni aperibus, quae nullus nequit numero computare in calculo? N. Multa in miraculo nunc apparent propatulo clara Christi clementia per haec facta recentia. When his own father, then the king, died, Aldhelm could have become king himself, but he didn't. His cousin Cadwallader, a feisty character and still a follower of the old religions became king, and in return Aldhelm was given his own kingdom within a kingdom, building the Abbey of Malmesbury. But this wasn't enough. Aldhelm wanted to be in charge of his own destiny. He went to Rome to see the Pope, and with a little luck, or magic, or by miracle, Aldhelm came away with permission for Malmesbury to stay outside the formal church system and to elect his own future abbots. Aldhelm helped the Pope. William of Malmesbury gives us a great description of the story, but the short version is that there was a scandal. A baby had been born to a nun and the rumour was the father was the Pope himself. To put a stop to the story, Aldhelm asked for the baby, who was then nine days old, to be brought to him. He publicly baptised the baby and then asked it whether the common talk of the Pope being its father was true. The infant replied loudly and clearly that the Pope was holy and not his dad. Back in Malmesbury, Aldhelm played a key role advising the new king, King Ein, and Malmesbury Abbey got bigger and bigger. And when a vacancy came up to be the bishop for the area, Aldhelm was promoted. When Aldhelm died in 709 in Somerset, there was a great procession that brought his body back here to Malmesbury. And he was buried here in Malmesbury and he was worshipped and pilgrims came to see his tomb. King Alfred the Great, writing 180 years after Aldhelm died, said that Aldhelm was England's finest vernacular poet. 
there was no one who was as equal in any age, he said. 220 years after his death, Athelstan was so attracted to Aldhelm, who he said was his kinsman, that he devoted his body and soul to his service. Athelstan gave gifts to Malmesbury and chose to be buried here in Malmesbury because of Aldhelm. By the time the pesky Normans arrived in Malmesbury in 1066, Malmesbury was the most important town in Wiltshire. It was the first entry in the Doomsday Book. And that is down to Aldhelm. Except the Normans were sniffy about Saxon heroes until they worked out that Aldhelm was such a big attraction for pilgrims who brought money to the abbey that he was made an exception. And Aldhelm was made a saint and giving a saint's day, the 25th of May, and we've been celebrating ever since. Aldhelm made Malmesbury. Father Ulfre, though the earth on heaven, see the Nome Yechaliot, to become the Nritje, Ye wurtha thin a willa on earth and swaswa on heavenum. Urni ye dach hamlet yan chlav sula us to day, and forgivus ura gultas, swaswa we forgiveth urum gultendum. And ne ye led a do us on cost nunya, ak alusus of uvele. Suthlitje. Hello, my name is Campbell Ritchie and I'm here on behalf of Malmesbury Town Team to introduce you to our new Saxon Trail around Malmesbury. Welcome to Explore Malmesbury. Explore Malmesbury is a community project led by Malmesbury Town Team created to tell Malmesbury stories at the places they happened. Choose a themed trail an Explore Immersive Tour or POI which stands for Points of Information to choose your own adventure. Malmesbury Saxon Trail starts at the Town Hall in Cross Hayes and links together 18 immersive information points around the town finishing at the Abbey. When you are using Explore Malmesbury you will always be able to see where you are and where the next point is. The trail works on your smartphone or on your computer at home. Let's dip in. What did Saxon Malmesbury look like? On the trail, we're telling stories from over 400 years of Malmesbury's history. Malmesbury was important enough to have its own mint. It might have been in Silver Street. Meet and hear Aldhelm, perhaps the greatest Malmesbarian of all. Join Elmer, the first person to fly. Daniel is more than the monk who sat in a well, and he inspired local musicians Gemma Waldron, Julius Gabitas, Frog, John Stamp and Dave Sturdy to produce the song Up To His Neck. And that can be heard at Daniel's Well. Look at us, look at us, talk to us, talk to us, come with us, come with us, come with us, come with us. Of 
23 Bristol Street is the oldest inhabited building in the country and owner Kez Smith gives us a wonderful guided tour. It was only towards the end of the 1980s that the render was removed and then the stones could tell their story to archaeologists who have been able to pinpoint what we've got here. For our finale, we'd like to show you how we imagine the area where Malmesbury Abbey is now might have looked in 1066. We hope you enjoy Malmesbury Saxon Trail. It and much, much more are all available for free at www.exploremalmesbury.com. Thank you. Thank you Campbell for giving us a close-up look at St Alden and also for showing us the potential of the Explore Malmesbury website. It's going to make a walk around town even more interesting and a real education too. Now if you didn't see the Flower Festival today here's a look at what you missed inside St Alden's Church and the Abbey. I'm afraid I can't make up for missing out on the cake though. Welcome to St. Aldham's Roman Catholic Church here in Malmesbury, built in the year 1875 and ever since welcoming people from all over. Although the church itself is only 146 years old, the saint to whom it is dedicated, St. Aldham, is 1300 years old. St. Aldham was the abbot, as all of you know, of the great Benedictine Abbey here in Malmesbury. And today, of course, we celebrate the Feast of St. Aldham. We normally have St. Aldham's Flower Festival on this day, though we weren't able to display them in a magnificent manner. We have put together a few things here in the church for your viewing, mainly by our parishioners and the churches together in Malmesbury and different groups in the parish and also the children from our school. I wish you a very happy Feast of St. Alden and you're very, very welcome to be with us on this day. Thank you. My name is Catherine. I'm so excited to be here in St. Alden's Church to celebrate St. Alden's Day with the Flower Festival. Can you see the stars, the sky, the earth and the sea? This is our pond. We have lost half a million ponds in the last hundred years. We have half a million ponds left. We need to make more ponds. What does it, the pond give us? Water for the crops, drinking water, and whole loads of life. Oldham, the man of the hour, monk and abbot, he loved to go down to the town bridge with his lute and sing to the people and gather them round him and listen to his words. We have many songs of autumn, but we have not been able to find them. We have lots of riddles, very hard riddles. And this is a poem that he wrote. What is the juice and joy, a strain of the earthy and sweet? being in the beginning in the Eden Garden. He gave us the world, 
are we looking after it? This is the font of life. Our Lady of Guadalupe, Mexico, look her up. All these flowers have been put together by our Filipino congregation. They said they would like me to tell you, please look after the earth. Another of our ladies, white flowers, exotic and simple, symbolizing chastity, purity and celebration. Our five windows, beautifully colored, reflected in the flowers, the butterflies and the bees, they're everywhere. The children at St. Joseph's Primary School had an Earth Day and they based it on Laudat Si by Pope Francis. I read some chapters and lines that stood out for me. Humankind was called to till and keep. Sadly, we have done too much tilling and not enough keeping. I hope you've enjoyed our place here, our lovely church celebrating St. Otto.